Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Q3 FY22 results conference call of Wells Fund Corp. Hosted by MK Global Financial Services. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of today's presentation. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Modi from MK Global Financial Services. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Fazan. On behalf of MK, I would like to welcome you all to Q3 FI22 Earnings Conference Call of Wells Fund Corp. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Abhinandan Singh, Head Group Investor Relations at Wells Fund Group, to introduce the management and take it forward. Thanks and good morning, everyone. On behalf of Westman Corp Limited, I welcome all of you to the company's Q3 FY 2022 earnings conference call. We have with us today Mr. Vipul Mathur, Managing Director and CEO, and Mr. Percy Birdie, Chief Financial Officer of Westman Corp Limited. Also with us is Gaurav Arjan, who heads Investor Relations for Westman Corp Limited. We will start this forum as usual with opening remarks by Mr. Vipul Mathur, the company's MD and CEO. After that, the floor will be open for your questions. Should you have any queries that remain unanswered post this earnings call, you can reach out to either Gaurav or me. With that, let me hand over now the floor to Mr. Vipul Mathur. Over to you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, and very good morning to all of you. <clears throat> Welcome to our Q3 FY22 conference call. I greatly appreciate and thanks all of you for taking time to attend this call. And to start with, I would like to take you through the key highlights of our operational and financial performance during this quarter ending 31st, March, 31st December 2021. In this particular quarter, we saw a successful IPO of our uh, Saudi company, uh, and uh, and it was an overwhelming response out there. You know, the, we have, as you know, we have diluted 30 percent. You know, the partners have diluted 30 percent of their uh, stake out there, and this uh, and this got an overwhelming response where it got subscribed in the institutional trenches by almost 72 times. And on the retail side, it got oversubscribed by 16 times. Further, we have a robust net cash position of rupees 839 crore rupees. We have a current order book of 543,000 tons and an active bid book of almost close to 2 million tons. Our sales volume for quarter three stands at 171,000 tons, and the total income from our operations stand at almost close to 1300 crore rupees. For the quarter, the production and the sales volume for our total operations was at 140,000 tons and 171,000 tons respectively. This is the production and the sales numbers. For India operations, the sales was at 133. For US operations, our sales was around 3,000 tons. And for our Saudi operation, the sales was around 35,000 tons. Importantly, I would like to give you some outlook and updates and what are the key drivers which are going to take this business forward. As you, friends, as you are aware, the Brent crude pricing has touched a seven year high of almost, almost touching $94 due to uh, tight global supplies. Several OPEC members have struggled to meet even currently monthly targets and lack spare capacity to boost productions any further. Only a handful of states like Saudi Arabia would have some spare capacity that could possibly increase output. Even gas prices are in unprecedented high levels driven by a very, very strong demand. Overall, the current layer, level of elevated prices, which we believe would stay, is a big positive for WCL and is expected to drive global spending for oil and gas pipelines related infrastructure projects in the medium term. We are also witnessing market corrections in steel price, and they are now at a much more acceptable level across geographies. So, the, the, you know, we have seen an unprecedented commodity cycle in the last quarters. That seems to be slightly cooling off. As regards India, India leading state oil and gas giants are expected to spend nearly 1.11 lakh crore rupees together in the upcoming 22-23 financial year as they supplement the government spending program to spur economic growth. The massive capital expenditure plans were unveiled during India's recent union budget and includes oil and natural gas corporations, IOCL, GAIL, BPCL, HPCL and All India. So all the if all the all the oil and gas companies are you know uh, spending uh, upping their capex. The capex spending of 1.1 lakh crore 
in 2022-23 compares with a revised estimate of 1 lakh crore rupees for the current fiscal year that ends in March according to the union budget document and almost 7% higher than the combined spending in the current financial year notably gale gas utility gas utility gale will invest more than 7500 crore rupees in the expansion of pipeline grid and petrochemical plant the pngrb which is the regulatory board uh, announced the 10th cdt round bidding has authorized 228 geographical areas comprising 407 districts in 27 states and union territories covering 53% of the geographical area and 70% of the population for the development of CDD network, the city gas development network. PNGRB has also launched the 11th round of bidding in September 2021 and has received 439 bids from 26 entities against 61 geographical areas. The government plans to raise the share of natural gas in this country's energy basket to 15% from the current level of 6.3% by 2030, and city gas expansion is a part of that roadmap. Despite the increase in the gas prices, cost economy remains favorable for CNG and PNG compared to the alternate fuels. The union budget 22-23 has also allocated 60,000 crore rupees to, the ex to extend tap water coverage to 3.8 crore households in 2022-23. This is a signature scheme, scheme which we are talking about, the Nal Sejal scheme. The previous budget has allocated 50,000 crore rupees for the piped water mission. The finance minister also said that the implementation of Kane Betwa River uh, Link project at an estimated cost of 44,000 crore rupees would be taken up soon. This is aimed at providing irrigation benefit to almost to 9 lakh hectares of farmers' land, drinking water supply to 62 lakh people, 103, 103 megawatt of hydro and 27 megawatt of solar power. To provide greater access to irrigation and drinking water, draft project reports of five interlinking projects, namely Daman Ganga Pinjal, Tapi Narmada, Govind, Godavari Krishna, Krishna Penar and Penar Kaveri has also been finalized. Once a consensus is reached among the beneficiary states, the center will provide support for implementation. Overall, the government programs reflected, reflect the continued focus of improving the lives of the people through several schemes to build, build water infrastructure to increase the use of, to, and to increase the use of natural gas to build refining capacity, etc. We are confident that we will see a steady improvement in demand both for line pipes and DI pipes as these programs stand, uh, are implemented over a period of time. USA. The U.S. production of dry natural gas averaged around 93.5 billion cubic feet per day in 2021, up 2% from 2020. Natural gas production fell in 2020 as a result of low natural gas and oil prices that reduced drilling activity. However, the production has started growing in 2021 as drilling activity has come back online, especially, back in, especially in the Permian Basin, where associated gas production in the region contribute to the overall growth in the natural gas production. EIA forecasts dry natural gas production will increase by 3% in 2022. The recent increase in oil and gas, oil, uh, oil and the domestic natural gas prices will contribute to an overall increase in drilling activity that will lead to the production growth from second quarter of 2022 onwards. The US crude oil production averaged 11.2 million barrels per day in 2021. EIA expects production to average 11.8 million barrels per day in 2022 and to rise to 12.4 million barrels per day in 2023, which would be the highest annual average U.S. crude oil production on record. The current record of 12.3 million barrels per day was set in 2019. The midstream companies have slowed down on investing in new pipelines as there were concerns about the regulatory issues and environmental opposition. Nonetheless, at the current level of high oil, current level of the high oil and gas prices, we are confident of a revival in the midterm. Pipelines continues to be the cleanest and the fastest way to move forward, to move vast amount of energy as opposed to more carbon emissive methods like rail and track. Saudi Arabia. The Middle East is a key area for the welded pipe market due to rapidly growing water and gas consumption driven by announcement of large and vital projects requiring significant investment in pipelines. The Saudi market is the main driver of the demand volume in GCC region. We, we see a huge demand for SO pipes is driven by the growth of the economy and the clear development programs launched by the government under the King, Kingdom's Vision 2030, the National Transformation Program, 
the National Industrial Development Program, the Logistic Program, the Housing Program, and the Financial Sector Development Program. Moreover, with a pickup in oil prices, we are confident that further opportunities will arise, both in oil and gas and the water segment from Saudi Aramco and SWCC. I would also like to inform you about the few business updates. One, IPO, IPO update on the joint venture company. As I mentioned earlier, the public offering of a joint venture company in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, East Pipe Integrated Company, on the Saudi, ex uh, Saudi exchange main market has been successfully completed in January of 2022. The IPO of EPIC was for 6.3 million ordinary shares representing 30% of the issued capital of 21 million, million shares by way of sale of existing shares of the current shareholders on pro rata basis. Post the IPO, WCL will own 35.01% through its step-down subsidiary in Mauritius and will continue to be the largest shareholder in EPIC. Trading of EPIC shares in the exchange is expected to come in soon after fulfillment of all relevant statutory requirements. The price band of the IPO during the big building process was in the range of SAR 72 to SAR 80 per share. As per the local regulations, 10% of the offering offered shares were reserved for retail shareholders and the balance 90% for institutional investors. The final offer price was set at SAR 80 per share with an oversubscription coverage of 72% of the total shares for the institutional investors and almost 16% more than 16% for the retail investors. So it was a it was a, it was an overwhelming successful IPO, and we are expected that it will get listed soon. Second merger update: uh, your acquisition of steel business of Wellspun Steel Limited. The the process at this point in time is in the final hearing at NCLT, and which is scheduled on the 23rd of February 2022. And we are expecting this transaction to be completed on or before 31st March of 2022. Third, update on the ductile iron project. As announced in October 2020, given the industry prospects and synergies with our existing business, we are setting up a greenfield facility at Anjar to enter the ductile iron pipe business. We are expecting to hit the market with our product offerings in Q1 of FY 2023. There is a big focus on creating drinking water supply in the country through government program. As previously mentioned, the Honorable Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman in her budget speech for the financial year, year marked almost more uh, year marked rupees 60,000 crore rupees for the Jal Jeevan mission that aims to provide potable water to 3.8 crore households in 2022-2023. Overall, the Jal Shakti mission ministry ha, ha, was allocated uh, rupees 86,000 crore rupees higher than 70,000 crore rupees allocated in the pre previous fiscal year. ESG. I am very pleased to announce that Wellspun Corp has been ranked 13 among the 41 companies included in the industry group in S&P Global DJCI Index. On the social dimension, we were, ranked, we, we were at the 77th percentile, and on the governance and economic dimensions, we stood at 78th percentile. Both are the top quarantile in the steel industry. This marks a milestone in the company, which is a part of growing where, where a part of growing movement of ESG and around consciousness and transparency. Lastly, as you may be aware, during uh, on the dividend side of it, during Q2 or FY22, the company paid a dividend of India, uh, rupees 130 crores, and that amount, dividend amount declared per share was in FY21 was 100% of the FB of rupees 5% per share. With this, I would like to conclude my opening remarks. We will be happy to take any questions and the floor is now open for the questions, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Any one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Abhishek Ghosh from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, sir, if you can just uh, broadly help us understand the uh, outlook for the domestic part of the business. Uh, uh, the volumes are still kind of muted to that extent. So how should one look at it? How is the uh, outlook? Uh, because earlier you used to, you know, you used to clock a much uh, higher run rate of volumes in the past. So how should one look at it in that context? Some uh, color there will be helpful, sir. Right. Uh, good morning, Abhishek. Uh, see, the volumes in the first two quarters have been slightly muted, I understand. And we all know the reasons that what were the contributing factors around that. We still in, on the, in the domestic market. We still have the third wave of pandemic coming up. And, you know, there was, uh, you know, th there were certain issues around that. However, now all those things happen to be behind us. I think so. there are a couple of factors which are very, very encouraging. We are seeing a consistent and a very steady growth in the demand in the oil and gas sector, number one. Number two, we are also seeing a very steady growth and demand in the CDD sector. What does it mean for us that when the oil and gas sector is steadily growing, our large diameter pipe business is going to see a growth volume. When the CDD business is going, there will be a, it will have a positive impact on our ERW business. The best part of at this point in time, and we will see in the coming quarters, is that because you know the capital investment in the water sector has also started coming in, which was you know which was missing in the last few quarters for a simple reason that all the state governments were more focused in terms of diverting funds for fighting pandemic, and you know they were not unable to invest that type of capital investment in the water, development of the water sector. So that has taken a hit. But what we have started seeing in Q4 onwards is that the, those investments in the water sector have also started to come in. We have also started seeing an uptick in the volume in the water sector. So all the three sectors put together, the CDD sector, the water sector, and the large diameter oil and gas sector, I think so we are seeing an uptick. And in fourth quarter onwards, we should see, an, uh, we should see a, a, a positive traction in that. Sir, if you can give us some color, in terms of the how is the bid book looking like, how is the pipeline looking like for the domestic part of the business? See, on if you look at the total bid book, I think so we are still looking at an active bid book of close to two million tons. But that's a global bid book, number one. Now, as if we if we talk about the India bid book, you know, what are the prospects which are going to be in India? See, typically in Indian market, we have been we have consistently consistently be seeing that you know almost close to 700 to 800 thousand tons of pipes are being bought on for the large diameter number one right now on the on the erw side of it we have seen almost close to 200 250 to 300 thousand tons of erw pipes are being bought for the cdd cdd part of it are being bought on a consistent basis and on the water side of it it is also close to a million tons of pipes which are being bought on a year on year basis what was missing in the last couple of quarters was that the water sector was completely redundant because the state governments were diverting the funds to fighting the pandemic. The oil and gas sector and the CDD sector were doing good. We were getting our own share around that, we, you know, and we were we were we were absolutely fine with that. What was missing from our portfolio was the water sector because you know that investments were not happening, and that is what will now come up on the table. So that it will brought it will not only bring in additional volume but incremental income as well. Okay. So, so essentially what you're saying is this 1 million of water which, which combined ERW and large dia give you uh, from the oil and gas was missing and which will kind of come back now. Is that the right way to look at it? The water itself, yeah. And sir, broadly, what is the kind of market share that you enjoy? I know it's a tough one because project to project it differs, but when you kind of internally looking at it, what is the typical market share that one should expect Wellspun Corp, given that now you have plants across uh, the center region also. How should one look at the market shares for you all as far as the water projects are concerned? See, we have a strategical geographical positioning in south, which is by, by virtue of our plant in Mandia. We have a strategic geographical positioning, positioning in the central part of India, which is a, by virtue of our plant in MP. And of course, we have a significant presence which we have in the, you know, in the state in, in Gujarat, where we have plants in the Hej and Anjan. So, and all these three states, we are seeing an uptick in 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 the, you know, uh, uh, we are seeing an uptick in the water demand now coming, and the state governments are willing to fund such uh, those projects. In these states, 
I think that depending on the competitive uh, competitive uh, framework, uh, the percentages would vary. But just to just to give you a brief, uh, just to give a back of the palm, I think so. We should definitely enjoy close to 20 25 percent of the market share. And so just one last thing, we have seen good profitability in the domestic part of the business. So how should one look at it now going forward? when these water projects kind of come through, uh, there'll be some, there'll be a function of operating leverage, but then be a function of lower margins also. So how should one look at the domestic margin uh, going forward? Hey, they are bound to only improve from here for a simple reason, because the, wa the water business brings significant volume for us and it helps us to amortize our cost. So which indirectly, directly helps us in improving our operating margin. So, this volume which was has been missing, you know, was a little, little bit of a pain area. But I think so with this coming back, we are very confident that things, you know, financially will also look much better. Okay. And so just two more questions and I'll come back in the queue is that if you look at the U.S. outlook, uh, while we, you may not have orders, but the outlook, all parameters which are required in terms of higher energy prices and other things have all kind of tick marked. So, Internally, when you speak to your team, is it like a one or two quarter phenomena or a year or two phenomena when those orders kind of come in? How should one uh, broadly uh, get some understanding around the U.S. part of the business? I can give you the comfort that the U.S. is one of uh, one of our very, very focused area and we are very closely plugged to that particular market. I think that the way things seem to be looking, you know, at this point in time, there is always a pattern which follows in U.S. The pattern is the first and foremost, the drilling activity has to ramp up. And which we are seeing that the, the, the number of drill rigs have, uh, have started improving and have started increasing. It is, being, it is followed by the demand, uptick in demand in the OCTG. That also box is now getting ticked because as the drilling activity is starting, the OCTG demand is also going up. That is followed by the demand in the small diameter, which is the EIW pipe. And now we have seen, you know, uh, some inquiries started trickling into, uh, into that. And then it is followed by the large diameter. So that is how the U.S. follows a pattern. And out of this pattern of four blocks, we are seeing the first two, we have very strong demand in the first two. The third one, which is the ERW part of it, we have started seeing some trickling. And I am very confident that, it, you know, in the fourth part of it, which is the large diameter, it should follow soon. Maybe the sale and on top of it, it is all governed all, you know, all because of because of high energy prices at this point of time. If you see the WTI and the Brent, they're all in a plus of $85. And if you look at the gas pricing at this point of time, they're almost close to four and a half dollars and above. So these are absolutely high levels of pricing, which is at this point in time, which is making the ENP companies to rethink and come back with their capital expenditure programs. And if that, if that is the case, I, I think it will be a matter of uh, one or two more quarters when we should see a significant dip on the table. Great. And so just one last thing. On the DI part of it, when should one expect the first, uh, you know, uh, first pipe to kind of get commercialized and come out because uh, adjusted for, because there's a lot of been, uh, you know, disruptions in supply chain. What is a, a legitimate uh, a timeline to expect to for the first uh, you know hot metal to kind of come out of that hey hot I, mean, I can tell you that you know from a from a project perspective i think so we are uh, you know despite all the disruptions you know we we have been able to make up the most part of it you know i'm not saying that you know we have been able to make up 100 percent part of it but we have been able to make up the most part of it just knowing fully that the disruptions were of a severe nature I, my sense is that, you know, uh, you know, our products will start hitting. We would be making various products, you know, which would be, uh, you know, which would be Pig Iron and Coke and uh, DI and all that stuff. I think so. Our product offerings one by one will start coming in the very first quarter of FI 2023. So, wish you all the best. I'll come back and thank you for more questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Sheda from Inam Holdings. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, thanks for the opening update and a very good presentation. Uh, a few questions. Uh, uh, first, if you can update us on the progress on a DI pipe project, how much is spent till date and 
what's the roadmap to uh, start the blast furnace followed by di pipes and uh, targets for next year uh, second question is on uh, wsl uh, merger if you can update how much uh, is paid till date uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, deadline and status quo of the merger happening and how is the wsl doing if you can give some operational numbers there yeah good morning bhavin uh on the di side of it at, at this point in time i think so we have in terms of your question with respect to the capital expenditure we are almost close to 1800 crore rupees of 1700 or crore rupees of capital expenditure which has been done which is almost we are almost 85 90% of our at the spend at this point in time and as i said earlier you know uh, we are, you know we are as you know we are creating a facility for glass furnace center coco and ndi all put together and uh, one by one these facilities would start coming on stream and the product will start hitting the market sometimes from the very first quarter of fy 2023 the project the project is absolutely going smoothly and i we see no concern whatsoever uh, at this point in time of, of course a project of this magnitude would need of course some time in terms of stabilizing and all that stuff which is a normal standard industry practice and i am sure we will also undergo through that but despite having said that I, I, we are not seeing any major challenges around that number one number two as regards your question with respect to wsl merger as i said you know there have been couple of hearings which has happened at the nclt the last one happened to be on the 8th of february in which the nc honorable nclt court has uh, directed has listed this list uh, listed for a final disposal around 23rd of uh, february so we are expecting that uh, you know uh, it is just a few more weeks when this merger activity should get completed and we are i mean internally we are keeping a view that uh, it should get completed on or before end of uh, 31st march 2022 so that's the update on the merger side of it in terms of performance side of it you know we and you know we have taken wsl we have taken it through a capital revamping program that program stands completed we have already started sponge making capable uh, sponge making we have already started making the sponge out there and we intend to start making billets uh, there from the very first week of march so that, that is where the that is when i think when we will talk about the fourth quarter we will talk about the performance of that wsl uh, in the demerged entity you, as you know that we also have wssl and which is our specialty steel company and i think so we and i am sure that you would be privy to the results which were announced yesterday more than the results the performance of that company was also disclosed and i can assure all of you that you know that company is absolutely on track both in terms of performance and it is only a matter of time that it will you know come out of the woods you know their acceptability their product offering and their acceptability both in the domestic market as well as in the international market is ever increasing they already just to give you some numbers they have a close to 2000 tons of an open order book and out of that 40% of their order book comes out of from uh, comes from export in this quarter they have done quarter 3 they have done more than 900 tons of uh, sales which has been the highest ever which has been done in the history of that particular company so all in all if you connect all the data points the block if you take all you know i think so they are absolutely on the track and uh, i mean I, i and 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 we see and we see a tailwind in that particular segment as well uh, there is a lot of demand which is coming up domestically there is a lot of demand which is there on on the on the export side of it and uh, you know with the, with respect to their quality and respect to their serviceability they have been able to capture it few of the highlights also around that had you know they have done uh, very high quality uh, grade hp heater tubings which are used for the uh, high you know for the high uh, you know for the thermal power plant and they also are supplying instrumentation tubings which is meant for the you know for the defense and all that stuff so not only that their volumes are going up the point i'm trying to highlight it is not about the volume but they are also making their inroads and presence felt in the niche sector which is what our ultimate goal is so i think so the journey around that has been fine and as as the merger would stand complete uh, in i think so in the fourth quarter of this financial year from next quarter on or the from the first quarter of the financial fy23 we will start uh, making you a detailed presentation about the progress of the same as well sure sir good to hear that Uh, so just on the di pipe you said 1800 crores capex is completed how much uh, is the cash spent and uh, uh, 
uh, capital creditors because uh, i see still the ba- cash balances remains high in investment balance sheet at 839 crores so if percy is there he can update how much actually the cash outgo has happened of the of that kp yeah uh so bhavin uh, there are two things that are happening one part of the project is getting funded by the uh, promoter that is wcl uh, which is a promoter for wml and wdi so uh, there we had taken certain long term debts as you are aware in terms of uh, ncds and uh, that funding has more or less uh, been going on track uh, so so far it's about uh, 650 cr which has already been funded by the parent uh, rest of the funding is coming uh, we are Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management has got disconnected. Request you all to please stay online while we reconnect them. Thank you. gentlemen the line for the management is reconnected thank you and over to you sir yeah uh, bhavin i don't know where exactly you dropped off uh, do you want me to repeat the answer or you heard it uh, you can repeat it i think yeah, yeah. sure uh, so basically uh, welspan corp which is a parent has funded about 650 crores uh, into the project and uh, the wml wdi which are our wholly owned subsidiaries uh, they have also taken uh, loans from the banks uh, which is also coming close to about 350 to 400 cr and then there are another 400 crs worth of lcs for the ladies and gentlemen the line for the management has got disconnected request you all to please stay online while we reconnect them thank you gentlemen thank you for patiently waiting the line for the management is reconnected thank you and over to you sir yeah uh, bhavin are you on the call yeah i am on the call i think you said 650 is uh, funded from uh, wellspin corp balance sheet right. and balance uh, some lcs are open correct and about 400 cr lcs and uh, another about uh, 400 is uh, term loans in the, in the subsidiaries So, uh, so if I uh, if I try to cross tally this number, your uh, net debt in Wellspin Corp, which you showed at eight thirty nine crores cash, so right. from so year only six fifty crores of cash outgo has happened from the Wellspin balance sheet and that has been it. So the pending payment must be close to now five six hundred crores. So this yeah. cash would reduce by that amount, right? So cash is already reduced till December. It is already reduced. Yeah, I'm saying uh, post December. Post December till the project starts, your cash balance will reduce by another five to six hundred crores purely because of the DI project. Yeah, yeah. See, the LC will also come up maturity, no? Yeah, or under see other LC also, so they will also mature at a certain point in time in future. Okay, okay, okay. And you will get the inflow from the uh, Saudi IPO, so that cash balance will again go up. That's right. and uh, is there any clarity in what kind of uh, taxes uh, mauritius entity first have to pay and then mauritius will uh, give back money to india 
So what kind of overall tax impact would come? So, so Bhavin, tax is still being worked out in a bit of detail. So uh, maybe for, we have about 60 days as per the regulations there to work out the tax impact. So I think uh, we will reserve that uh, answer uh, for some more time. But I can tell you that the gross proceeds from the IPO is about 252 million riyals. So gross proceeds coming to Mauritius, which 252 million riyals, if you just multiply by about 19.8 rupees, it will come close to 500 crore rupees. But this is gross before, uh, before IPO expenses, before tax. So that clarity we will give you uh, after some time. Uh, definitely in Q4 it will come. So before Q4 we will have that clarity. And uh, India holds 100% in Mauritius, right? This entire money would come to India from Mauritius? So uh, India holds 90% in Mauritius. Uh, there is another partner also who holds 10%. Okay, so 90% of that uh, uh, 450 would flow? Yeah, you can roughly say that, yeah. Net of tax, net of tax, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirav Shah from GC Holdings. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir, and congratulations for the successful uh, IPO. Uh, so I have a few questions. Firstly, if uh, you could just give a broad breakup of uh, order book plant-wise, I understand that USA would be hardly anything, but how much is Saudi, India? If you can just give that breakup, please. <laughs> At this point in time, we have close to 543,000 tons of uh, open order book at this point in time, out of which close to 350,000 tons is here in India. Uh, South, uh, uh, LR is close to 5,000 tons. And in Saudi, we have close to almost 190,000 tons. So that's the broad uh, take of place. Okay. Uh, and sir, we did uh, dispatch of around 3,000 tons from our the US plant. But out of the 132 hour cross of operating EBITDA, if you can just broadly give a breakup uh, uh, between the US and India. Uh. So in, in, in uh, our operating EBITDA out of India was close to 112 crore rupees. And our uh, operating EBITDA out of uh, little uh, US was close to 22 crore rupees. Got it. And uh, in our last call, sir, we did mention that uh, uh, our fixed costs in US are somewhere around two and a half million dollar, and our storage income is around half a million dollar per quarter. And if I'm looking at our other expenses, uh, it's fallen very sharply uh, compared to the average rate of the first half. Uh, so, I mean, is there? I mean, are there any write backs in US because on a three thousand ton of uh, uh, dispatches in US and uh, net fixed cost of $2 million, we still have reported a operating EBITDA from 22 crores. So any any one of items over and above the storage income in the US operations? Uh, so, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, so what has happened is the other expenses are a bit on the lower side, largely due to freight. So there's substantial uh, uh, reduction in freight expense, uh, both in US as well as in India. So US, of course, as you know, the volumes are on the lower side. And India also, uh, comparatively speaking, in this particular quarter, our freight expenses were on the lower side. But is that the only reason? Because if I see the net fixed cost of $2 million and hardly any operating EBITDA from seal of pipes, so still we have reported a $3 million of positive EBITDA compared to a net fixed cost of $2 million. So the delta is a little... So there are certain storage revenues also that we received from the customer there. So there are certain uh, pipes which were stored on behalf of the customer. We also get certain storage revenue for that. So that's over and above the half a million dollar of storage revenue that we generally do for that uh, old order. That comes in, yeah, that comes in the US as EBITDA, correct. Got it, so got it, great. Thanks a lot, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shivam Prashur from Funded Sales Agency. Please go ahead. Um, hello, good morning, sir. I'm, uh, so we are not able to hear you. Please increase the volume of your device. Hello, yeah, now I'm audible. Yes. Yeah, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations on the number side. Uh, so I want to ask about the China plus one issue, China plus one strategy that's happening. So that the export, like from the previous few quarters, we were, we were listening from you that the China plus one, like China is not exporting. So what's the current status of that? 
Uh, I you are asking about the export of their uh, raw material. The, the the export of their pipes also the competition that we that, that face from China and the international markets. Uh, we are not seeing, to be honest, at this point in time, even at this point in time, we are not seeing any significant competition coming off of Chinese pipe into the international market. You know, there could be some 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 pipes here and there in the African market where we do not have a very dominant present and we do not we are not very competitive either way. But in the markets of, you know, in the mature markets where we work and with the Fortune 50 we work with, I don't think so we are seeing any any influence of Chinese pipe uh, disrupting the business. Okay, and sir, like you said about the public capex which is happening and in the CGD and oil and gas space, uh, can you also comment on the on what side the private capex is happening in uh, domestically in India? Like if you can uh, highlight the sectors that you that you are seeing that private capex is also happening that can be us. We see a lot of investment, and I mean I also read exactly what you are reading, but uh, we see a lot of in, uh, capex investment happening in renewables. We are seeing a lot of investment happening in the steel industry. You know, these are the two uh, sunrise sectors which we are seeing that uh, there's a lot of capex which is being infused. I mean, that's the, at least these two sectors I happen to track. I am not too very sure that, you know, I'm sure that there would be multiple sectors where it would be happening, but these two sectors which I keep a close watch on, I'm seeing uh, the surgeons and uh, capital expenditure are definitely happening in these two. And sir, any private participation on the CGD side, if you can comment on? I'm sorry? Uh, any private uh, participation on the city gas distribution side? I think so. The dominant, you know, we are we are seeing uh, almost uh, some 28, 29 entities uh, uh, and strong entities competing around that. And uh, we, you know, we have been uh, we we have been ex extremely successful uh, at least to supply to quite a few entities, including Adani's to other and to Torrents. But uh, I mean, there there is a, there are some very strong uh, entities which are now getting into it. Okay, and sir, so any guidance on uh, improving the the return on capital numbers and all? If you can give us any guidance that from which quarter it will look like you said in the like two quarters the situation might improve. So can you give a guidance on that also? See, uh, it would difficult to give a guidance, but I think so. What we, what what I am trying to highlight is that you know. It, what uh, I see that you know the, a big chunk of business which was a water chunk, a water business which was completely evasive in the quarter first three quarters, we are seeing a trickle uh, that trickling back and that is a very good sign and I think so that in terms of volumes and margins should add up uh, into our profitability. So I mean uh, we we are also I mean we are seeing that happening. But I think so. It, it's a little too early to predict around that, and uh, I'm sure. They give us this quarter, and I uh, hopefully things should things will only improve from here. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, it's sorry to interrupt. One last question can I ask? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, is there any impact on the like like the like the volatility in the steel prices? Does that impact our does that impact our order book and all? Uh, impact what? If, if the steel prices go up from here, if if we take a scenario, that will there be an impact in demand of our products? Uh, see, uh, first and foremost, the steel price impact has no uh, steel price increase has no significant impact on our PNL for a simple because the steel is a pass through for us either way. And at this point in time, every you know every order what we have you know globally. Has, is covered with a backup steel. So on this order book of 543,000 tons, we are not exposed to any potential steel impact if the prices go up. Number. Uh, the, on the second part of it, that the, what about the steel pricing? I think so. The steel prices were at an unprecedented high level because of the commodity prices went significantly went up. We have seen significant calibrations which has happened. But having said that, there has been a fundamental shift in the steel market also because the input cost has gone up. So, you know, I, I see that the steel market will also be in a, will be pretty much range bound. And as long as it stays range bound and it, as long as it stays predictable, I think, the, you know, the buying activity will not uh, get impacted because people have factored that into their costing and pricing. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the answers. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikas Singh from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. 
good morning vikas sir just one clarification in terms of saudi money so apart from this taxes are there any inter corporate loans and adjustment which could have come and uh, has to impact the to overall uh, uh, remittances from saudi to india no okay sir so my second question pertains to us so there was the infrastructure bill passed on the water as well uh, amounting to over 50 billion us dollar do we have any opportunity or the scope to service that part from our little lock mill or that is completely out of question uh, at this moment of time see the, while the infrastructure bill has already got passed the um, the the financing to that to the various states is yet to trickle down number one but uh, and uh, and as as it trickles down to various states i mean i we we are absolutely open and prepared to explore those opportunities uh, both in the water sector as well as in the structural sector because uh, from a capability point of view we can make those you know whatever the tubular products they require in our range we are we can always make that they are nothing different than what uh, we are you know what we produce today so as so we are keeping a watch on that and as things will as things pans out if there is a need and um, and and if we can service those needs we are absolutely open to do that technically we are competent to do that understood sir and sir from our execution point of view considering that us is still pretty low on the order book so at least it would take us at least couple of quarters uh, for it to recover on a execution side because if we even start getting order from tomorrow it would take us some time before we start executing so is that understanding correct at this point of time yes there is always a lead time to that and you know those are standard lead times and uh, that understanding is correct tomorrow you get an order you don't start servicing from tomorrow if there are lead times of 3 to 4 months so that have, you know that we will also be subjected to that and so and so just one last question so we were uh, thinking of spending 170 crore on the pmp Uh, I also so any update on the thing where we are in terms of so, uh, improving in that capacity or whatever we have spent so far so we have we have gone ahead with that particular project we have you know there is a significant progress which has happened on that particular project good question that good that you asked that question vikas greatly appreciated we are well on track on that and i think you know we are still looking at august you know our target was always to get into the market by august september we are pretty much on track on that Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank sir, coming to this, yes, sir, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, firstly, to this uh, storage part, uh, storage revenue. Uh, sir, is, is it relating to the Keystone uh, 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 pipeline? Is uh, therein we are uh, acquiring this income, sir? there that is one of it okay so sir uh, uh, exactly what is the status there sir and many uh, uh, and, and are we uh, getting the cash or only a provision entry is being made sir we are getting cash we are invoicing them we are getting cash okay and what is the update sir there, there should be a, re- a resolution for the same or many uh, 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 what is the end story for it sir <laughs> the market has to come back that's it that is simple the market has to come back the demand has to pick up the pipelines have to get constructed and that is where these pipes are going to get consumed and as i said earlier in this particular talk i think so at this point in time all the boxes whether you see the oil price whether you see the gas price whether you see the demand you you, you see the rig count you see the ottg i think so all of them are now falling in place so it i i we have reasons to believe we have seen this cycles multiple times in the past basis that we have reasons to believe that Uh, you know uh, uh, things are coming around the corner and uh, it's a matter of uh, one or two quarters here and there where things uh, in the large diameter should also pick up and that is where the final disposal disposal these pipes will also happen and our operations in little rock should also come back on track <coughs> so, so, uh, the, uh, do do we had any environmental issue also i think so earlier due to which the deliverables were uh, were stopped so uh, any update on that front environmental issues uh, we were not pertaining to the environmental issues no pertaining to this dirty crude but, uh, flowing to canada and uh, in that region specifically that was the reason uh, for which the pipeline was not laid out if it was not of this i will stand corrected there then 
Yeah, Saket, you are right. They are they are they are political issues, and uh, we don't want to get into that. That's between the governments to settle it out. We are a line pipe producer. We produce a high quality line pipe. We produce that. and we are there to service our customers and all of them whom we have supplied the pipes they stand completely satisfied with our product offering okay sir so coming to the fixed cost sir what is our fixed cost for the us facilities currently as i said we have almost 2 and a half million dollars a quarter that's the sort of a fixed cost what we have in uh, at this point in time and uh, it is uh, it is about you know it, it comprises of uh, our peak manpower it also comprises of uh, some statutory Uh, taxes and duties which we are uh, obligated which are there and uh, so that's the way it will continue and what is the break even for us to so just to uh, just to cover those fixed costs what, what should be the uh, uh, the uh, the execution side uh, the, in the minimum bare minimum requirement of uh, the pipes being produced depends you know, it depends at the, you know we have multiple 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 product portfolio yeah yeah yes sir. multiple product portfolio so it all depends which port which okay. product we are going to supply so i mean i would love to have all my products you know my spiral yeah. mill my erw mill and my coating mill working and for the good part at this point of time as we speak our erw mill and the coating mills are working and it is only a matter that our large diameter spiral mill has to come into play and as i said earlier i think so as the things are impro- seems to be improving in us we we could see a light at the you know in next one or two quarters uh, the things should improve there sir for the large dia parts sir uh, uh, are there for also we are doing back to back steel purchase or that are kept open ended since they are long gestation gestation period for the uh, order execution so uh, what is the take on uh, the raw material security for large dia pipes always as i said earlier as a policy we are completely covered we always cover the steel we have always maintained that in us that is our standard policy so never ever we have kept it open we are never subjected to that risk sir last last two points first of saudi ipo uh, uh, the congratulations to the team for that sir what kind of valuation sir if you could give some understanding uh, in terms of uh, uh, the ebitda number or, or what kind of p ratio the same has commanded so that would give us some understanding uh, how are pipes companies being valued uh, globally especially in the saudi region so if you could share uh, some light on that also sir see one thing one thing this ipo reinforced is that pipelines are going to stay that is a very clear message which is coming if you see the over subscription which is happening which means the investors still have tremendous amount of confidence not only in the company's ability but also in this particular sector right so you know the, we we have been hearing talks that uh, you know fossils are histories and all that stuff i think so they that's not the case this this is going to be they, they, we are there for a long play number one number two in terms of valuation you know we you're talking of the ipo valuation right yes sir yes sir Uh, so I want to see how our com- how is the company value sir. sir. Sorry to interrupt, but sir, what what actually happens is that in an IPO, even even in in our country, Nike and Paytm were subscribed many times. So uh, over subscription does not, uh, uh, according to me, de- define uh, the 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 real value. It is the cash uh, generation from the company that will uh, that is going to stay a lo- uh, in the long future. So just wanted to understand how is. Uh, the business is evaluated there at, at that time so the, the value given for the business since it is a it is a cash generating machine correct no you are entitled to your view vikas but uh, i i am telling you the feedback from the ground because i have personally been uh, completely plugged in into this whole ipo process i what i am mm-hmm. trying to give i am not going, giving a theoretical statement i am only represent, representing the sentiments what i encountered during this ipo process you know all mm-hmm. when we met you know all the investors i think so they were extremely confident and buoyant about the future of this particular industry that's what i was trying to tell you if i said it differently my apologies for that now uh, for, from a future from a futuristic perspective i think so that market is a very very strong market at this point in time i think so the amount of investment and the capital investment which is going to happen in that particular market is going to be phenomenal they have a vision document called vision 2030 and if we look at it you know the amount of uh, network pipeline network both for water and oil and gas that they are going to create is uh, is uh, absolutely mind blowing and i think so the keeping that in view the market has responded extremely well 
and uh, if we if we saw i think so from a p perspective we would have got a multiple of more than 12 13 so that is that is around uh, i think p would be around 12 percent or not wrong right yeah if we had a p ratio we should be we should have got a multiple of around 12 and that is how the market has valued us there and if i uh, if i may add my personal comment that is what this industry is all about today might be today it might be, might not be valued you know uh, at other places but uh, this is the this is the right valuation uh, you know any indus, you know industries in this particular companies in this particular sector should be looked at but anyway that's my personal view to that uh, sakit did i answer your question yes sir i got the uh, point and uh, sir uh, earlier sir uh, we also had some modification in the uh, Uh, in the memorandum article wherein we were pursuing some marine fabrication industrial fabrication part of business prospects uh, what is the uh, update on that and sir especially with this west point specialty solution also sir we did spoke about it in uh, in great detail that uh, the type of uh, import substitute uh, we can expect going forward from there so if if you could throw some light on these two aspects let me take the let me take this wellspun specialty solution first I, i think so in the earlier part of the call i'm sure you would have heard i gave a little yeah, update yeah, yeah, yeah. about the as to how this company has been performing and uh, you are mentioning a very right point i think so in terms of import substitution you know it it is a great because there is a lot of you know there is a lot of restrictions which are now coming up and uh, under this atmanirbhar bharat scheme also where the imports of these products are almost coming to uh start you know the, would be very very difficult so i think so that is giving a further uplift to that particular business so we are extremely buoyant and confident about the future of that particular company number one number two with respect to uh, the marine the, the, the marine fabrication the marine fabrication part of it i think uh, on the object cross part of it as we, uh, you know we always keep on evaluating growth strategies around wellspun corp and we have we see we have been very clear that you know we have to diversify our portfolio at the wealth fund corp level you know typically we have been a b2b company and our intent is to move to you know to bring specialty steels into our play the b2c component into our play so that we are able to bring much more predictability into our earnings and for our investors so it is in that it is in that uh, framework that we keep on exploring multiple opportunities the marine opportunities as what we uh, talked about it or you know we we have been looking at various options and as and when they will conclude they will they will come to a conclusive stay and we will come back and um, make a disclosure please and a, sm- a small point on vessel specialty sir uh, with with this uh, restructuring and uh, and all vessel specialty would be for, uh, fully uh, will be owned by uh, vessel steel wsf and that is being owned by belcor uh, that that should be the structure sir no but can you help me yeah. so uh, <clears throat> wellspun specialty solutions limited is a 50% subsidiary of wellspun steel limited and uh, wellspun steel limited uh, steel undertaking is getting demerged with wellspun corp so the end result of the merger will be that wellspun corp will be holding 50% of wssl which will continue to be a listed company Okay, sir. Sir, I, I have. Uh, can I have a question? Uh, raise a question on Wellspun Specialty Solutions performance also, sir. Uh, since it it is it will be a part of Wellcorp going forward. It would be, uh, I, you know, from a compliance perspective, I think so. That may not be very appropriate, sir. Okay. For us to answer that question at this point in time, you know, that being a listed entity, but uh, I would be subjected to all those questions once this merger happens, and I I am sure I will be able to satisfy all your questions in times to come. right sir uh, all the best sir and uh, thank thank you for uh, all the elaborate answers sir we hope uh, th- th- things do uh, move for improvement and going forward thank you sir thank you thank you very much okay, thank you sir thank you as there are no further questions from the participants i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments uh gentlemen thank you very much for taking your time out today and uh, and uh, and hearing us out our perspective our outlook and our future growth strategy all in all on behalf of wellspun corp i want to assure you that the company is is striving and growing and moving forward by virtue of expand you know you know expanding their portfolios also all the markets all the segments where they are present in which is the oil and gas the water and uh, the specialty steel the sector which is going to get merged and 
the B2C business or the TMTs and the billets, what we are venturing into, all these sectors are showing significant growth prospects. Also, you know, and uh, I am sure the performance of the company will meet uh, the mark of the investors and their expectations. And uh, we stay committed to our our governance. We stay committed to our quality, and we stay committed to our serviceability to our customers. And uh, with that, I would once again like to thank you once again for joining us today morning. And if you have any further questions, you are absolutely please kindly reach out to Abhinandan and uh, Pasi or Gaurav, and we will be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much, and have a good day ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of MK Global Financial Services, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.